Okay, now gold's going to 3,000. And I'm like, well, okay, eventually. But it's not going there by June. That's not how it works. It kind of goes up and fits and starts. Two steps forward, one step back. As these specs rush in, momentum dies out. Price goes back down. The specs go back out. Turns back higher. Specs rush back in, make a higher high, and then they get flushed back out. So um, I'm, I'm in the camp of being bullish, but I'm not in this to the moon camp, um, <laughs> at least not right now. In today's market news, exclusive Indian banks halt silver imports as duty differential spurs private trade. India's banks have stopped silver imports after private traders bought large volumes of the precious metal from the United Arab Emirates to benefit from a lower duty. India, the world's biggest silver consumer, imposes a 15% import duty on the metal. The lower import tax has enabled traders to offer silver imported via IIBX at a discount of around 2%, a Mumbai-based bullion dealer with a private bank said. Let's take a quick look at the silver market's technical analysis. Silver is hovering around the $25 level, and it certainly looks as if it is trying to break out yet again to the upside. It does make a certain amount of sense because everybody's banking on the Federal Reserve coming out and saving everybody with loose monetary policy because that, of course, helps precious metals, and it does make for a compelling trade. Now, we'll show you the best clips of of the interview, but first hit the like button, smash the subscribe button and check our pinned comment for some massive sign up bonuses. Enjoy the video. You know, we're kind of waiting on gold to finally break out. It's been a very well-defined trading range between about 1700 and 2000. Maybe you could expand it $50 each way, but it was really in, in this box going sideways. It, it's painful to go through that, but it's also beneficial because once you finally break out from a trading range, the longer it goes on, the more obvious that you have a breakout. And that's what finally happened right at the end of February. Three things uh, combined to send, you know, gold, gee, almost 10% higher, 7% higher, maybe in about seven days. Um, you had that breakout. The breakout was driven by what were perceived to be pretty bullish comments. Uh, on the day they were made, March the 1st, by one of the Fed goons, Goon Waller. And he put out a speech that said, I'd like to see the Fed do a couple of things. Move most of their balance sheet into the short end. Um, that'll drive down lower uh, short rates, which then usually that means once you uninvert the yield curve, that's when the recession begins. And then he also said that gives us some room on the long end to do more asset purchases uh, when we need to. Hey, that's more QE. So back on Friday, the 1st of March, gold shot higher, broke out above the trading range, closed that day at all time daily highs and weekly highs. You get that breakout, you get this surge of momentum buying. That's what we saw last week. Coincident to all this, a dollar was falling by about a point and a half. And it became this perfect storm of a, of a, uh, of a breakout. And we got all the way to, I think, 2202 last Friday. So it's it gold is looking stronger, probably still has a ways to go. Um, but that's what has driven gold higher. And it's nice to see it finally happen. I don't know if it'll be broken, but I still I think we'll probably get there. Um, and that was kind of, again, the basis of this year's forecast is we get up there, then kind of probably bang around and wait for some direction. Um, and we'll see what how this year plays out with the Fed and monetary policy. And I mean, the election is looming out there. All the geopolitics are looming out there. Uh, resumption of the banking crisis could be coming. You know, the banks or the Fed opened up that near term funding facility last March and then just closed it this past Monday. It, commercial real estate, all these different things are out there that, you know, who knows how this will all play out. But typically anything that makes a new all time high generates a lot of momentum, a lot of press, a lot of people, hey, I want to jump on board. And you kind of overshoot that all-time high, 8%, 10% higher. And that's why I always thought a move about 2100 price end is to 23. Um, and so that's been my target. The move has come exactly as you would expect. Um, back at the end of February, total open interest, a total amount of contracts for gold on the COMEX was at five-year lows. Basically, nobody cared, right? I mean, it was 
there was no open interest. There was hard, you know, not much volume, not much going on. As price rallied, it was driven higher by hot speculator hedge fund, you know, family office, institutional money wanting to buy gold futures. That's what you got to have. And open interest expanded while price went up 7%. Open interest expanded by 30% from about 410,000 to about 530,000. So all of that new speculator buying is what drove price uh, $120 higher, or $140 higher, or whatever it was at the end of the day. It will be that re continued speculator buying that will continue to drive open interest higher that will drive price to 2300 when we get there. But again, with all bull markets in COMEX gold, it's never a straight line up. I mean, uh, what after that 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 high that new the, um, back on March the first, man, I was sitting there reading my Twitter that weekend. All these people talking about, okay, now gold's going to 3000. And I'm like, well, okay, eventually, but it's not going there by June. That's not how it works. You kind of goes up and fits and starts two steps forward, one step back. As these specs rush in, momentum dies out, price goes back down, the specs go back out, turns back higher, specs rush back in, make a higher high, and then they get flushed back out. So um, I'm, I'm in the camp of being bullish, but I'm not in this to the moon camp. Um at least not right now. Gold has garnered a lot of attention in the last few weeks with its record-setting run. Since the end of February, gold is up nearly 7% and set an all-time record of $2,195 an ounce along the way. I've been arguing that silver is drastically underpriced given the supply and demand dynamics for quite a while. With gold setting up for an extended rally, silver could be poised for a record-setting launch of its own and it just might steal gold spotlight. Anticipation of Federal Reserve rate cuts and worries about de-dollarization spark the gold's recent bull rally. I've argued that this is just the opening act. The U.S. government isn't going to suddenly become fiscally responsible or more reserved in using the power of the dollar as a foreign policy tool, so de-dollarization will likely continue and accelerate. When the economy cracks, we all know what the Fed will do. It will run to the rescue. It will slash rates to zero. It will relaunch quantitative easing. It will unleash another tsunami of easy money. What is gold going to do then if this recent rally based on the hope of rate cuts was this big? The rally we'll see when the Fed actually delivers rate cuts far beyond what anybody today expects will likely send the price into orbit. Now we'll show you more clips of Schechtman, but first like and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the video. The, the banks, you know, make the market. Uh, they are the ones that create the vast majority of the COMEX contracts and the new open interest as it comes in. I mean, think about it. If, if there was a fixed amount of contracts and on a big rally, a new rush of interest coming in, you had to buy, you, know, you had to find sellers of existing contracts only to meet all that demand. You know, you'd have much more volatility. So what happens is you get these, like I said, these, these hedge funds, these, uh, these uh, institutional accounts, uh, private wealth, all that, they start buying COMEX futures. And to kind of dilute that demand and meet that demand, the banks take the short side of that buying and issue a new contract. So that's how you see open interest go up. That's how you see the speculator long position is bet by bank short position. So you generally a profitable thing for the banks because they know eventually that buying interest is going to run out, right? Uh, everybody that will have bought in the short term has bought. Momentum begins to tip over. Uh, some of that late come money starts to flow back out and price comes back down. That's that two steps forward, one step back. That is typical, you know, typical of a bull market in the COMEX. So, yeah, we'll see again this Friday's COT report will show another extension of the large spec long position, another extension of the bank short position. And then eventually we'll get a pullback and uh, specs will dump longs and the banks will cover shorts. And then a new uptrend will begin again, you know, and then, you know, the whole process continues to repeat. Um, that's, that's how it works. That's how it's always worked. And that's why, again, price won't go to 3000, you know, by Memorial Day. It just doesn't work that way.
Um, but it, it will eventually in time in a kind of a stair step pattern like that in a bull market, it'll eventually, you know, do that type of thing. So that's, again, that's just how it works. It's just, it's the pricing scheme that we're in. And, uh, and so if you, you know, if you're aware of that and you're, you know, if you're trying to trade it, that's information you might want to make sure you keep track of. And on the long side, right, more buyers than sellers, price goes up <clears throat> or you can get a short squeeze. And what's a short squeeze? That's where, you know, a whole bunch of people are short and they're getting squeezed as price is going higher and they're buying back their short. And again, that's buying too. So there's two ways of buying that can drive price higher. Gold has seen this rush of new money come in on the breakout. Silver hasn't broken out yet. And so where gold's open interest has gone up by 30% on a 7% rally, silver's open interest has gone down on an 8% rally, at least through earlier this week. And again, that's speculator short covering driving that rally. So what we'll wait for is just like gold had to break out above 2100 to have this breakout that everyone can see, silver's still in a box. It's been roughly between 22 and 28 for the last three and a half years. So gold breaks out, gets a rush of new money. Silver hasn't broken out yet. In fact, before it gets to 28, it's got to get through 26. So for now, silver is just kind of fiddling around, incrementally moving higher, moved higher earlier this week because copper was breaking above $4. Um, once silver gets above 26 and then makes a move and gets above 28, that's when you'll see a similar move to what we saw in gold this week, you know, rush of speculator. Oh, look at the clear breakout. But until that happens, it probably kind of can continues to poke along. Higher gold will help drag it high, drag silver higher, but it's not ready to just like blast forward until it gets a breakout like gold is seen. What do you think of Hemke's way of trading the bull market? Are you actively trading your positions or do you just stack and hold? Post it in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you have not yet done so and watch this video right here because you'll love it. I see you on the other side.